Hey there, Sunbelt fans, and welcome to another edition of Sunbelt Conference Weekly. I'm your host, Katie Morse, wishing you a happy opening day from the Sunbelt Conference. We've got a lot of action coming your way in this episode. We'll check in with two softball teams as they open competition today, as well as hit the practice fields of Georgia State and Little Rock Baseball. It's all coming your way on this episode of Sunbelt Conference Weekly. It's a great day to be on the diamond, and Sunbelt softball will start its season today. Texas State is one of those nine teams that will take the field, and Sam Eisenberg gives us a closer look at the Bobcats. Coming off a third place finish in the Sunbelt regular season conference standings a year ago, and with the preseason Sunbelt Conference Pitcher of the Year returning, Texas State is looking at 2016 as a year to really compete for the conference championship. Yeah, th this has been fun since we started about two weeks ago. Uh, players have been really excited to come out every day. They've been fun to watch. They've been fun to coach. Um, it's been a really positive couple of weeks. Uh, so you know, now it's just that, that factor of trying to play somebody besides yourself. The Bobcats finished 32-21 and 21 overall and 14-6 and 6 in the Sunbelt Conference a year ago. The season was highlighted by a Randy Rupp no-hitter and perfect game in a 14-13 slugfest win over Louisiana Lafayette. With eight starters returning, the Bobcats feel their experience and team chemistry will help take them to the next level. And so coming back this year, um, even though half the team is new, whether that be freshmen or transfers, um, but we seem to bond, bond, especially towards the end of the fall last year, and just mesh together. And that's something that, you know, if it was to happen, it couldn't have happened in better, uh, better timings. The Bobcats return their top three hitters from 2015. Kendall Wiley, Ariel Ortiz, and Kelly Baker give the Bobcats some proven pop at the top of their lineup. Senior Kelly Baker was third on the team in batting average last year and has been a staple in the Bobcat lineup since she arrived in San Marcos. Um, I mean, my teammates are great. They push me every single day. Um, and I always want to push myself to be the best and always thinking about, you know, what are the other the other teams in the conference doing right now. I know they're probably working hard, so I have to outwork them if I expect to play well. The Bobcats' 2016 non-conference schedule is highlighted by four tournaments and games in San Marcos versus Texas and Texas A&M. The Bobcats were picked fourth in the preseason Sunbelt Coaches Poll and received top 25 votes in the ESPN.com USA Softball Poll. This game's hard. If it wasn't, everybody would be doing it. Um, and, you know, you can fail seven out of ten times and still be real successful at our game. So I think that's been the biggest thing is just trying to, to get them to understand that the game is good and bad. It's not good or bad. Um, and trying to keep them in a positive mode. And I think if this group figures that out, we're going to be dangerous. The Bobcats start the 2016 season from right here at the Bobcat Softball Stadium with the CenturyLink Classic on February 12th. For the Sunbelt Rise program, I'm Sam Eisenberg. Across the Fun Belt in Troy, Alabama, the Lady Trojans softball team has been preparing for the 2016 season in a brand new way. Whitney Hartzell gives us a closer look at what hitting the diamond really means. The boxing glove has been around for 3,000 years, and while softball hasn't been in existence for nearly that long, they both have a similar mentality, and that mentality is to fight. The Troy softball program is continuing a tradition that they started last year in which they use boxing gloves as a way to single out people who show that they want to fight for their team. Um, something we really pride ourselves on here at Troy is just fighting, fighting for each other, um, fighting for the team. and. So that's kind of what the gloves came from. We chose the first person to have them and then they choose it every week. That person chooses who they think you know represents the fight and the finish and of Troy softball. So it's a really cool thing. Amber Jones, a freshman from Atala, Alabama and one of the most recent recipients of the gloves, says that they have been a motivator to push harder for her team through difficulties. That's how like I, I've struggled a lot in the fall with conditioning like in fighting and finishing and it just kind of was I think it just kind of stood for like, I, I came back after the break, I fall, I finished, and I've really showed improvement and I think that the that my teammates have noticed that. So it's it's really, really honorable that I got it. Well, really, I mean, I spent the whole fall using two words and that's fight and finish. And uh, we, you know, before the spring season started, we, we had a team meeting and we brought them out and kind of explained that that's what we've been preaching is to fight. I mean, fight for yourself, fight for your team. You know, you have more in you than you think you do. You have so much more fight, win the late innings. Even when it's not going your way, just you're gonna get punched and you're gonna get, you know, punched on the ground and get up and fight back. So uh, I thought the girls, I mean, I think they loved it. I just really wanna take, you know, the whole concept of fighting and, um, and focusing on like, 
you know, no matter what happens, I'm going to keep fighting. Like, if, if I have a bad at-bat or a bad play, I'm just going to fight through it. And I think, you know, that's a really big thing for me because I struggle with it, you know. So I'm just going to try to take it on the field with me, you know, fight through everything and finish. Amber expresses how she has specific criteria for who will get the gloves the following week. I really like, you know, makes a huge effort in practice and someone who's really talking and picking people up and, you know, brings energy to the, to the team, you know, on a daily basis. That's really who I'm looking for. So the question remains. Where do these gloves end up throughout the week after someone receives them? It's usually everybody has them for a week. They bring them to weights, they bring them to conditioning, they bring them to practice, and when we travel, they put it, bring them on the bus and they're at the games. I take them everywhere I go. I have to bring them to weights. I have to, I have to take them to the conditioning, practice, group. I have to bring them to everything. They go with me everywhere. The Trojans begin their season tomorrow at home against Eastern Michigan and begin conference play on March 12th against Georgia State in Troy. Coach Mullen says they plan to stay in the same mindset leading up to each game. Fighting, finishing, and focusing uh, focusing in each rep and really being consistent uh, each practice. And then obviously when we, start, when we start the season, being consistent throughout the game and playing, you know, competing. Focus and competing has really been the two words we've focused on a lot. And uh, focusing every day at practice and competing against ourselves in the game and getting a little bit better at each day is kind of what we've focused on. For the Sunbelt Rise program, I'm Whitney Hartzell. While Sunbelt softball begins action today, Sunbelt baseball continues to prepare on the practice field. Let's catch up with a few of the teams and see what 2016 has in store. With opening day just a week away in Atlanta, the Georgia State Panthers continue their spring practice. The Panthers were picked to finish sixth in the preseason coaches poll, but head coach Greg Frady says his team is shooting for more. This is our third year in the Sun Belt. It's an extremely difficult league. We know how tough the competition is, but our emphasis and focus is on us and how we play baseball and then our own personal goals. So right now, our focus is to be the best baseball team it can be with the outcome leading to a possible championship. Junior Ryan Blanton believes they have more to offer in 2016. Right now, as a team, I think we're expecting to be in the top of the conference. We're one of those real leaders last year. We led the conference through I think like seven weekends or so and I think we just fall off at the end so this year we're just really working on finishing strong. Georgia State opens their season on February 19th versus Western Michigan. With the Sun Belt Women's Basketball Championship just a few short weeks away, the conference competition is tougher than ever. Let's take a look at the week's action. Appalachian State Women's Basketball earned back-to-back -back wins last week over UL Monroe and second place UL Lafayette and they were led by an underclassman. Sophomore Maddie Story played facilitator in the Mountaineers' two wins as she led the team in points, points scored, free throws made, and offensive rebounding. And she is the Sun Belt Women's Basketball Student Athlete of the Week. She scored 23 points against the Cajuns and 18 against the Warhawks. And she scored in double figures in nine straight games, the longest stretch by an App State student athlete this season. And stay tuned tonight because there's more women's hoops action coming your way beginning at 5 p.m. For more information on where you can watch, visit sunbeltsports.org. On Tuesday night, UTA men's basketball took on Texas State in a primetime ESPN2 showdown. Let's take a look at the highlights. Jalen Jones scored 17 points and UT Arlington cruised to a 65-53 win over Texas State Tuesday night. The Mavericks doubled up Texas State in the first half, taking a 32-16 lead into the intermission and pushing the advantage 52-23 with under eight minutes to play. The Bobcats were down by 20 points with 2-12 left, but had a late rally to outscore UT Arlington 12-4 to set the final margin. The Mavericks climbed into a three-way tie for third place in the Sun Belt Conference with Arkansas State and UL Monroe. And more action is coming your way tonight as 10 teams will hit the hardwood across the conference. For more information on where you can watch, check out sunbeltsports.org. And that'll do it for another edition of Sunbelt Conference Weekly. Be sure to follow the Sunbelt on social media and join the conversation on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And once again, from a has-been to all the Sunbelt softballers out there, happy opening day. Make sure you throw like a girl. For all of us here at the Sunbelt, I'm your host, Katie Morse. Thanks for watching.